avoid waste you want to walk in divine prosperity avoid waste in luke chapter 15 verse 13 the biggest problem with the prodigal son was not that he asked his father for what belonged to him the biggest problem of the prodigal son was that he wasted his wealth placing a demand on what was his was no problem but he wasted it by riotous living riotous living riotous living give me the message translation riotous living riotous undisciplined dissipated living every waster has no maintenance culture one of the signs of waste people who waste they have no maintenance culture they don't know how to maintain anything they handle something for one week to one month is destroyed that's a spirit of waste that's a spirit of waste no matter the provision of god on your life don't live in waste jesus fed five thousand men with loaves and fishes and yet in john chapter 6 verse 12 he said gather the fragments let nothing be lost another translation say let nothing be wasted meaning you see he said gather the fragments gather and they gathered what was left and they had 12 baskets you will not know how much you are losing daily as a waster if only you stop wasting you can gather a lot a wealthy woman in america one of the wealthiest white women was eating in a restaurant when she was done eating she called the waiter he said pack this leftover together at least my dog has something to eat today wealthy she's so rich she could have said no 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 if i do that my image will be affected no that's how she got there in the first place by fighting waste this is the generation where you to walk into a restaurant with two pieces of chicken you eat one and leave the other one there because you are live for who what are you living there for because you are trying to act like a person of class you drink a, 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 a bottle of mineral you know just take two or three sip and you leave something finish it finish it avoid waste imagine judas judas that was a terrible man was still against waste judas <laughs> judas said why are we wasting this perfume this alabaster box of ointment no maintenance culture your phone is bad won't you fix it no i want a new one no maintenance culture your shoe is bad won't you fix it no i want a new one that's how you know a waster they don't maintain something when it's bad they dump it they pick another one and you cannot go far in prosperity if you are a waster one of the problems with wasters is that they build castle in the air. Somebody walks to you and favors you with some money today. You blow everything, believing you will go back to that same person tomorrow. Not knowing that his mood may change. You build castles in the air. Because the funds came, you believe it's going to keep coming. I tell people, when you get funds, don't spend it, send it. Money comes to you and begin to think, how will, how will I be creative? The spirit of God inside of us has given us creative capacity. When funds come, you create. You create. How can I? I do that a lot. I tell people I don't just pray. I don't just fast. I think. I sit down. How do I do this? How do I work something out so they can guarantee returns? How do I do this? How do I do this? To guarantee returns how do i do this how do i do this how do i do this there was a time many years ago even before i got married i bought a car car and i gave somebody on higher purchase we signed the agreement i sat down how do i do this before i got married i could buy ladies bike five or six i'll do higher purchase i'll have some that will go and walk and bring funds for me been thinking how i began to graduate from that into different levels how there's a time i saw a land somewhere in lagos my wife my wife was shocked i saw a land somewhere in lagos on the expressway i said how much they told me and i bought it very cheap i left it i left it i bought that land then about five of them three hundred thousand each 
I left it. After a while, somebody called me and said they want to buy your land. I said, I'm not selling. He said, They want to buy, I said, I'm not selling. He said, One plot, nine million. I said, I'm selling. <laughs> I'm selling. 1.5 for the five land. I made 45 million. Creative ability. But you know what somebody will do that with that 1.5? They'll go and buy designer suits. A time is coming. The Bible says, build, it said, build your business. He said, build your business before you build your house. Many of you are not creative. How can you? You have no money in your bank account. You can carry 150,000 and buy hair. And you have nothing in your bank account. There are businesses you can invest 150,000. No. You are carrying a phone. How much is that? It's crazy. Someone walked up to me and said, Papa, give me capital for business. She was wearing a gold... Um, nose gold this thing wearing one even wearing one on her leg so I asked how much she told me how much she, she totaled everything 400,000 I said madam you are wearing your capital <laughs> if you really want to do business sell these things you are not ready I won't take you serious go and sell these things waste you want to live big at the expense of your future why are you living in a flat no, why are you live in two bedroom apartment and you're a single person see i want my space i want my space broke people don't need space people who are broke don't need space you don't need any space in all labor there is profit the labor of the foolish where yet every one of them because you not know how to go to the city stop that kind of life am i communicating here I sit back and that's why I can never depend on church my wife and I sit back and God gave me a wife who is also very creative that's true sometimes I want to surprise my wife I end up surprising myself I saw a phone that was very nice and expensive it's the latest I bought for myself bought for my wife till today that phone is in the shelf till today I said, you use this phone now. The mistake I made was I told her how much. Is how much? I told her, I said, eh? Eh? She dropped it. I'm very sure if she sees somebody who wants to buy that phone now, she will call me, my husband. Somebody wants to. Can I sell it? Why? She's thinking of that money can do something. If not, now, if she had a wasting spirit by now, I'll be grounded. I'll be grounded because you tell me I want this I want that I want this I want that I want this I want that I'll be grounded but there are some funds I've given to her she will multiply them sometimes I need money she will come back and give me but as a young lady you must start learning it now you get money now straight you are going to a boutique you are a waster you get money now you have several shades white gold weave on black weave on brown and yellow weave on you have you have a portion in your room all they have there is human hair human hair human hair human hair human hair, human hair. and you put them and they are standing on the speed standing on the manicure just imagine at night Avoid waste, please. Avoid waste. Begin to maintain that which you have. Maintain it. Don't rush to buy things because that's the latest. You want people to see you as a big person. Public image. Nobody gives you an award for using the latest quality of thing. Nobody gives you an award because you got the latest phone. Nobody gives you an award because you got the latest whatever. Nobody gives you an award. In fact, you think they actually respect you. They don't respect you. They suspect you when they see that with you. Amen. I said amen. amen. You get to a level. One time, we were, our ministry was already on. We were like seven or four, five years. I can't remember. And God was doing a lot of things. And somebody came to me and said, Why are you not on television? You can afford it. I said, it's not about starting. It's about continuity. 
I have sat down, I've looked at it. Can I continue? Because the Bible says, Everyone that built a tower must first sit down to count the cost, lest happily after his start is not able to continue. And the passers by begin to say, Behold, the building which the man began, he couldn't complete it. I said, So it's not about starting, it's about continuity. I've looked at it. Can I sustain this? I didn't start. When I saw I could sustain, we started. We continued. Some say, oh, have your own channel. Have your own channel. I said, no, oh, we have started. Have your own channel. I said, it's not about having a channel. It's about sustaining it. When I discovered we could sustain our channel, we started. So you must all know how to plan yourself. Any money that comes to your hand today, plan it. If you have taken your seed off, your tithe off, sit down. Lord, give me wisdom. How do I multiply this? Because you are not going to be blessed several times. Joseph interpreted the dream for Pharaoh. He said, you saw seven years of plenty and seven years of scarcity. You saw seven, you saw seven huge, well-fatted cows and you saw seven skinny cows. And the skinny cows were swallowing the fatted cows. He said, that means the fatted cows are seven years of plenty. The skinny cows are seven years of scarcity. He said, the seven years, the, the tiny cows you saw swallowing the fat cows mean the seven years of scarcity will swallow the seven years of abundance. Abundance will come after that scarcity will come. The people will feel the pain of the scarcity than the abundance. That is life. There is plenty, there is scarcity. What do we do? He said, get out men. Let them open stores and begin to save in the days of abundance. So that when the years of abundance are over and the scarcity comes, they have enough that they have reserved listen god is not going to bless you all the time god will bless you for the season what you do with that season is what determines how the blessings will continue it's not going to come another time there are certain people god will not plant you around for life he will plant you around them for a season and begins to bless you bless you what you are able to do at that period of favor is what determines what you build on for the rest of your life when you are wasting it wasting it wasting it wasting it you have no investment mentality no savings at the end of the day you cannot blame god because you once had a time of glory that you could not manage am i communicating here i was privileged by the spirit of god by the help of god to be talking to the richest man in africa who's from the from the north we are talking one time and i was looking at his phone i was angry i was looking at his phone then it was a blackberry bold five and that period iPhone was already out. He was still using Blackberry Bold 5. So I spoke to him and said, ah, oh God, this phone is old. He said, I know. I said, change it. He said, why? I can press it to receive. I can press it to off. That's what matters to me. He said, this money you are saying I should buy phone. If I put it in sh the sugar department or the cement, it will generate more. You see how great men think? That's how they think. But a poor man wants the latest phone. There are some of you looking at me now. You are still students. You have a phone. You have a phone. Quite alright. It's working. Nothing is wrong with it. But you are desiring another one. What happens to the one you have now? If the other one comes, I give it to my younger sister. She has a phone. It's a waste mentality. And we have to kill it in the church. And that's the problem we have. Somebody who has nothing doing. Is selecting apartment. You are selecting the kind of apartment you want to stay. You say, No, I don't have money. Shall but me? No, 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 no. I can't stay in all those general. I can't stay. No, I want those GROA. You are broke. Stay anywhere. Your child's school fees is how much? Someone said to me, He said, um, I should give him money. He wants to. The wife is pregnant. They want to go and give birth in America. Of course, I've seen all kinds of things. A young lady walked to me. She's 26 or something like that. I said she got a master's um, admission in London. What was her school fees? She put all together a ticket, the whole fund she would need to graduate from school. Everything she would need was about 26 million. She came to me. He said, sir, even if it's half of it, even if it's a quarter. I said, even if it's half of what? 
I said, you think me, I will open my eyes and give you that kind of... Because you are a stupid person. It's a waste of investment. Unilag does masters. Uniben does masters. What are you doing in London? Now, the problem is when she finished that masters in London, she will come back to Nigeria to look for work. As you think I'm stupid? I said, such things, you pursue such things when you are believing or desiring a scholarship. Am I communicating? A scholarship. God can provide, obviously, but God expects us to live in wisdom. You can't, you can't get something like that and start embarrassing everybody. You're about to get married, you have no money. Yet you picked a wife and you're harassing everybody. My wedding is coming. My wedding is coming. You didn't do something. I gave you a card. You didn't do something. My wedding is coming. Did they force you? Now, if they support you, I've seen all kinds of embarrassment. Papa, I told you about my wedding. I told you about my wedding. I don't understand. You don't start what you can't finish. When I was getting married, my wife didn't pay. My, my father, rather, didn't pay my wife's diary. I paid. The clothes my father wore, my mother wore, my in-laws wore, I bought them. I bought them. My wife, I changed their whole house. I was still single. Equipped it because of people that will be coming. I planned myself. I prepared I prepared I was not I was not dependent on nobody I was gathering I was saving I was saving we fixed the date if you remember well there was no money I postponed it I had printed card they said but the car don't come out now I said I, I don't understand are you the one buying the car I said I know they married that date again I know they married that date again but car don't go out now you they married now me one married money no day I postponed it six months i didn't print card on that i was waiting when it was getting that six months the kind of money i was expecting hasn't come i postponed again of course because i don't want to put anybody i don't want nobody to to embarrass me my wife was doing now is it bright brighter whatever brighter whatever i gave her a cow what's your name brighter whatever she gave her show she gave it to people we were spending, living happily. He said, they are doing our spin stars this thing. I said, carry one cow. Let them know you are married. They are doing this one, doing this one. Carry this. They are doing that one. Take this. When I finished the wedding, I slept. I slept well. I wasn't owing anybody. There was nobody to pay. I saw a cartoon. Somebody was getting married and he knelt down the altar. And they showed the two shoes. On one leg there was H E, on the other there was L P. Help. <laughs> as, he, as he knelt on the altar, they zoomed the shoe. It was a cartoon. One was H E, one was helping. In other words, he was saying, "Help me! This thing I'm entering now. I need help." <laughs> Let's not waste. As a matter of fact, with any money you can plan a wedding. There are a lot of things to cut off. I was telling Mama something. She, we were arguing. She and I. Say she doesn't agree with me. I said, but this is me. If I want to plan a proper wedding, I don't need a, brides, a bridesmaid. What is she owing? I will own my gown by myself. <laughs> bridesmaid, I will now give her a uniform just to be holding something for me. What's the best man doing? To be cleaning my sweat? Give me handkerchief. I will clean my sweat by myself. All those little, little, those girls that they call bridal train. That will buy a shoebi and they won't pay. All of you go home. No a shoebi for you. Don't, I will cut off a lot of things. I will invent it. It will be a new style of wedding. It will be a new style. When you walk in the lane with your bride, they say, What kind of wedding is this? It's a new style. Somebody must start something new. They said, ah, No bridal train said, No, it's a new style. Where's the maids of honor? It's a new style. We just finished. What about food? No food. Go home. It's a new style. <laughs> No food, no money, no money. Have you not seen people who got married and they didn't eat anything? No, but no, they didn't have money. Why would you kill yourself? Public image, but private disaster. Some can finish and you give refreshment, give cabin biscuits and coke. That's what 
you can do you are laughing you see the mentality we have at the end of the wedding people have gone home you collected money and you had this heavy interest rate your blood pressure is high you married a young lady into debt she's crying hallelujah you don't need you don't need there are certain things we put ourselves under you say i have five children that's why i'm staying in a flat you don't stay in a flat because you have five children you can put five children in two rooms stay in a flat because you can afford it what do you mean you are staying in a flat let all your children sleep in the city room you and your wife sleep in the bedroom is it truth manage yourself live in dignity there are things where well, I couldn't afford. I couldn't afford, and I didn't kill myself. There were things my, I knew that my wife needed when we just got married. I couldn't afford it, and I didn't kill myself. She didn't pressure me because she knew I couldn't afford it. I couldn't afford it. I couldn't buy my wife a new car when we got married. I, it was second hand I could buy, and I bought the second hand cars. I didn't kill myself. I could buy Belgium. What's Belgium? No, the first one I bought was in Belgium. It was Tokumba, Belgium. She didn't bother so long you could carry her. When I could buy brand new, I now bought brand new. Want to impress people? Want to impress people? At the end of the day, you are living. You see, this is the mentality people have. And it has ruined them. Go to the US, go to Europe. You see them with small cars. In fact, the first time I was in, in um, no, not South Africa, Germany. I saw wealthy men on bicycles. I said, bicycle. Wealthy men. They were cycling. Cycling. I got to a shopping mall. I saw bicycles everywhere. I said, what is this? I said, in my country, you use bicycle, you are poor. I said, you are going to the farm. You see the mentality? Am I communicating? Sometimes you are moving from Benin. You are moving from somewhere very far. You don't have much money. You enter your car empty. You burn fuel and come here. You burn fuel. And you have some friends who are going to that same program. You can't call them and say, Oh boy, how much is your to Benin? He say one five. Say bring eight hundred. Bring eight hundred. Bring you, you from their funds you fuel yourself you go back you didn't bring a dime from your pocket no you are blowing empty you wind all the glasses you put on AC you want music so it's crazy 